All right, good morning. This is the Fantasy Sports Boss. I am back. Thanksgiving is over. I hope you had a great day. I certainly did myself. Um, and, and, you know, as far as the football was concerned, we got three really good games yesterday, competitive games throughout. Um, you know, I know the Giants-Cowboys game kind of tailed off at the end, but the other two games went, you know, right down to the wire. Um, really good stuff for Thanksgiving, uh, you know, and, and quite a few fantasy football-worthy items to discuss. So, I'm going to do it one at a time. I'm going to take the Detroit Lions-Buffalo Bills game first because that was the first one that was up. And if you were an Amon Ross St. Brown owner, uh, you started your turkey day in a very good mood. Now, before I go any further, hit the subscribe, hit the notification button. Remember, it's Friday. I know the schedule is a little wacky this week because Thanksgiving kind of throws off our uh, equilibrium, but... Uh, live stream five o'clock tonight so make sure you tune in at five o'clock eastern time um to the live stream we're going to go over the injury report go over all the news of the day injuries uh what have you and um you know of course take all your questions from the chat so make sure you tune in five eastern time now speaking of Amon ross st brown uh you know it just it has continued what has been another dominant season he was dominant the second half of last season the question was coming into 2022 was would he have that same kind of dominance with TJ Hawkinson fully healthy, with DeAndre Swift fully healthy? Uh, insert joke here with DeAndre Swift. Uh, and the rest of the offense, DJ Chark and what have you. And the answer has been a resounding yes. Now, he's been nicked up himself a little bit um, and hasn't scored since the beginning of the season, but he did score in this one, and the targets and the receptions have been uh, PPR gold. You know, he almost reminds me a little bit of Keenan Allen, uh, earlier career Keenan Allen, you know, the lack of touchdowns, but the the very high amount of targets uh, and very good uh, impressive yardage um, pretty much on, on a week-to-week -week basis. So St. Brown finished with uh, nine catches, 122 yards and a touchdown. Um, he even, um, you know, he, he, he threw some uh, impressive blocks to help us, uh, you know, Jamal Williams get free uh, for one of his touchdowns. So uh, it was a very good all-around performance for Amin Ross St. Brown. Now, uh, speaking of um, Jamal Williams, you know, it wasn't the best day on the ground for him, but 18 carries, 66 yards, and he scored again. So that's all this guy does is score. Scored three last week, scored in this one, and it really just underscores um, how much he has taken fully, uh, taken firm hold of this backfield. Now, DeAndre Swift, the, the much maligned DeAndre Swift, it, guys, we even the biggest apologists for DeAndre Swift have just got to throw him in a towel. Five carries for 19 yards. Uh, he did catch two, four passes for 24 yards, but I said a few weeks ago, he is now a glorified pass catching back. That's what he is. Um, he seeded 18 carries to Jamal Williams, you know, and even Justin Jackson got four carries, um, you know, only four yards, uh, caught a pass for 15 yards, but now Justin Jackson is starting to get involved. And so this is all bad news for DeAndre Swift, who is only a flex play at best. That's it. And, uh, you know, I guess, you know, unless there's a coaching staff change, you know, I'm not ready to fully throw in the towel on DeAndre Swift long term because I still believe in the talent. But, um, yeah, man, it's been tough. I mean, I know he 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 um, had an opportunity to score a touchdown that, you know, that was down at the one yard line. And that was a real bummer there. But um, it's just not happening. And we just got to stop pretending sort of like with Kyle Pitts in Atlanta. We just got to stop pretending that the numbers are going to suddenly show up. Jared Goff, 23 of 37, 240 yards, two touchdowns. What I will say about Jared Goff, who is much maligned, the Ryan Gosling lookalike, uh, is that when Jared Goff gets time, he can dissect any defense. I mean, he was the number one overall pick for a reason. Um, a lot of his problems the last couple of years were due to shoddy pass protection. Now, Dre Lions have a very good offensive line, probably top five in the NFL, uh, and he was just slinging it all over the field. So, um, you know, in terms of fantasy, he, the, the, the Lions like to run the football in the red zone, so that's not the best thing for Goff. But in super flex leagues, he's holding his own as the second option. Uh, rest of the offense for Detroit, not much happening here. James Mitchell had one catch for 22 yards. I really thought he'd be more involved to this point. Um, you know, DJ Chark did catch a touchdown, two catches for 16 yards. He's not worth uh, uh, using in fantasy. So let, that brings us to the Buffalo Bills. So Josh Allen, the points were there. All right, 24-42, 253 yards, uh, two touchdowns, but he did throw another interception. The interceptions are coming fast and furious. It reminds me of Brett Favre throughout his career. Both guys, Josh Allen, Brett, uh, Brett Favre, really strong arms, think they could fit the ball in every little crevice, and they throw a lot of picks. And that's that's where Allen is right now. Um, now, he did rush 10 times for 78 yards and another touchdown. So three touchdowns for Josh Allen. This was his best game in, in a month. Um, but I will say here, and I posted this yesterday, is that he, he still doesn't look right. The accuracy is just not there. 
Um, he's scattering footballs all over the place. The elbow is still a factor. All right, I'm not ready to say that he's 100% from the elbow. It's, it's still a factor, for sure. But I like the fact that they're still giving him opportunities to run. The touchdowns are going to be there because the offensive skill position uh, players are just so good on this team. All right? Um, now, Isaiah McKenzie. We haven't talked much about Isaiah McKenzie this year. Um, I know in the preseason and right at the start of the season, I told you I have a somebody I know on the staff in Buffalo, and they said, listen, Isaiah McKenzie – Everybody's talking about Gabe Davis. Isaiah McKenzie's going to be the second guy. They, they're scheming him open all over the place. They love him, this and that. He's battled some injuries, some inconsistency, but it's starting to happen now. He led the way six catches for 96 yards and a touchdown. Um, very heavily targeted in this game. Uh, you know, double-digit targets. He had 10. Big play guy. Um, and as far as Gabe Davis, four for 38. All right, no touchdowns. So another ineffectual game. For Gabe Davis and it's been like that all year you know Gabe Davis now I think we can say is that guy in fantasy who pops once every four or five games and then just does this four for 38 the rest of the time and that's only a flex guy at best borderline bench and and I know that the cost was high but it, it hasn't happened now Stefan Diggs quiet first half and even quiet first three quarters but he came alive late eight to save his day eight for 77 and he scored a touchdown so it's a huge season for Stefan Diggs um, no surprise there. This guy is an alpha uh, PPR jam wide receiver one, and and he's just going to continue to do that. Uh, rest of the team, nothing really worth uh, talking about. I thought it was interesting that James Cook started the second half, but only two carries for four yards, uh, two catches for 14 yards. I thought they maybe would, are going to try to get him more involved. I still don't understand why they traded for Naheem Hines. It just makes no sense. They're not even using him. Um, but Devin Singletary led the way, 14 carries for 72 yards. He was good. 5.1 a carry is very impressive. He only caught one pass for for uh, eight yards. So, you know, it, it's very, very, very low end running back to flex borderline for Devin Singletary. All right, so that's the uh, Bills-Lions game. I'm going to talk about all the the other two games in their own separate videos. Um, plus some crisis points coming out of the uh, these three games and uh, the usual videos um, uh, that I also do every week. So make sure you look for that. Hit the subscribe, hit that notification button, and the live stream at 5 p.m. Eastern time.